So you need to determine your SPRS score for the SPRS portal to demonstrate your compliance with NIST 800-171. I'm gonna walk through a quick tool that will help you do that, as well as talk a little bit about the process. So we have this spreadsheet tool that's available for free download on the Castle Lock website. We won't even ask you for your information. Just go out there and grab it, and hopefully it's of use to you. What this tool allows you to do is basically uh, step through the controls in the NIST 800-171 and determine based on your implementation, what you have in your SSP, that whether or not you know, the, how this would, would score and what you need to present to SPRS. So to be able to do the scoring correctly, when we're looking at these controls, we need to make sure that we're not just answering based on what the control is asking for, but that we're asking based on whether or not we meet everything in the NIST 800-171A assessment objectives for that control. So let's look at an example. I'm gonna scroll down here through the sheet and we're going to find control 313.6. 313.6 ask, does the system deny network communications traffic by default and only allow network communications traffic by exception? So deny all and permit by exception. What this control is looking for is are we only allowing necessary traffic and are we denying everything else? So we have to go in and we add approval rules in front of the deny and those rules should be fairly narrow in scope based on business justification to reduce the amount of surface and amount of traffic that is able to enter into our CUI scoped environment and that really provides us good protection at a network layer to make sure that there's not additional opportunity for um, an adversary to exploit this. A good practice, not called out specifically in the control, is to apply this for ingress and egress. So a lot of organizations feel like, well, I'm already inside my network. I'll have a very generous egress um, policy or rule set. But egress is a way that attackers are able to uh, beacon out to get information out of the environment, uh, to communicate with potentially malware or uh, systems that they have under their control. So it's best practice to make sure that we're applying this to both traffic coming into our environment and traffic coming out of the environment. So when we're assessing this control, let's go look at the NIST 800-171A. And on, in this document, so here's NIST 800 a we can just do a quick search for our control that we're looking at. And we see that to meet this control, we have to do two things. We have to make sure that network communications traffic is denied by default. And two, we need to make sure that the communications traffic is allowed by exception. So let's look at our sample SSP to see how we've implemented this control. So here's a sample of an SSP for this control. We have this marked as implemented. We're saying that we're managing this at this environment. It's an environmental managed. And, and so this, this part would really vary depending on your SSP setup. But in this setup, we're making the difference between, you know, an environmental CUI type of enclave or versus like an enterprise environment. And the solution and implementation that we've done is we've configured these firewalls to be denied by default. So we have a rule in there that denies all traffic for any, any. And above that rule, we put in our rules that are allowing our business traffic to support you know, business for this particular environment. Those rules are reviewed by you know, a configuration management process and approved, and we're making these rules as narrowly as possible. So we're capturing the source, the destination, the ports and protocols, 
that are necessary to facilitate that traffic. So we would be in pretty good shape for this control. So we, if we look again, network traffic is denied by default. We confirm that by looking at our, our firewalls. That sounds good. Network traffic is allowed by exception. We talked about how we're doing that. So we have both of these assessment objectives met. We now know that with confidence, we can come into this and we can say, yes, this is fully implemented. And we see here that this control is, is weighted as a five, which means that this is one of those critical, not, not, critical, not defined as critical, but this is one of the controls that if not in place could allow for exploitation of our system. So we're going to essentially step through the overall spreadsheet and answer those questions using that same methodology. So for each one of these, I want to make sure that I'm referencing my SSP and that my SSP has been built around making sure that I have coverage for all of the assessment objectives in NIST 800-171A. So you really need those documents to be able to do this. You need 800 800-171, 800-171A to, to complete your SSP and to move forward. After that, we can just step through and we can answer these questions. And it will, in the end, produce a score for us that will show up on this scoring tab over here. And we can put in any of our information that we would need to be able to submit our SPRS score. Again, this is your local spreadsheet. You can you know, use this as, as planning for reporting your SPRS score to the portal. There are a couple of controls that allow for partial credit and that is something that I will show you real quick. So for example, there's a control about FIPS protection, which is 31311. And over here, is that fully implemented? Yes. Yes, we're using encryption, but it's not FIPS validated. This control we cover in another video to kind of walk through what that means. But if we change that score, then you know it'll show up and we'll get different credit on the scoring. So instead of the full five points, we're only, we're going to lose three points. So we're going to get partial credit. In general, if you don't meet everything in the assessment objectives, then that control you need to mark as no. So for example, on this 313.6 control that we were talking about earlier, if we weren't allowing traffic by exception, but we had traffic denied by default, then this control wouldn't be fully in place. And if, as you're looking through the different controls, you'll see that this control has three different assessment objectives that need to be met to mark that as in place. So you just walk through the spreadsheet, mark these, um, you know, yes or no as the implementation. And the only other thing I want to point out, and we're going to be fixing this in a future version, is that if it's a control that might be uh, not applicable for your environment, for example, maybe you don't have wireless. You see here I'm on control 3117. Maybe you don't have wireless in your environment. Uh, we'll add in NA in the future to the capabilities of the tool. But if, if it is NA, for the sake of scoring to make sure that it doesn't incorrectly deduct, you know, go ahead and mark this as fully implemented within the tool. Make sure that in your SSP that you have that marked as not applicable and that you have the documentation that shows that wireless is deliberately disabled. And, you know, if you ever implement wireless, then you'll have to update that in your uh, SSP. So that's it. You'll you'll essentially just go through and as you update this, you know, anything that you mark no will take away from that perfect score and you'll see that reflected in real time at the top of this input sheet. And when when you've completed 
the entire form, then over here, your total score will be updated to reflect your results. So I hope you find this tool useful. It kind of helps to be able to see how that DOD assessment methodology scoring is, is working in the background and maybe a little bit easier for you than, than stepping through their PDF. So that's it. We'll see you next time.